Purdue takes on Gonzaga in the Sweet 16, and this is just a rematch from the Maui Invitational. I'm going to dive into five themes and break down the film of what I think could be pretty important in this fun matchup. So if the game involves Zach Eady and Purdue, we have to start with how teams are going to try to defend the post. And Gonzaga and Purdue played already once this year. We'll show some plays throughout that for sure. But I want to start with just kind of Gonzaga's base defense. And that is that they pretty much stay one-on-one. You're going to see here ball um, in the post against EK. And he's just going to go one-on-one in the post. And EK is a pretty good post defender. Um, Gonzaga has done well defending the post. Sometimes they'll maybe throw, like have a guard kind of dig in. But for the most part, it's just going to kind of be one on one and just wall up, um, keep the defender in front or the offensive player in front as as EK does here uh, and just hope for the miss. And that's just kind of what they have done for most of the season. And now as we look at that matchup from earlier in the season, let's go to an ED post up. Let's see what Gonzaga did. So Purdue's going through their normal stuff. Oftentimes, Edie will set that pin down like he just did where it's right here. And then he turns and immediately seals. And now it's getting kind of high low action is what they're looking for. Um, Ball has to swing here because Gonzaga was showing a little bit of help off Colvin. Colvin gets it, throws it into Edie, and now once again, it's pretty much just one-on-one work. You're going to see right here, um, Anton Watson, he's going to kind of dig in a little bit, but it's it's pretty much one-on-one coverage. And what EK and and Gonzaga wants to do is they just want to push Edie as far out as possible. Now, that is easier said than done, but... In this game, they actually did a pretty decent job in the first half of kind of doing that. Um, But also, this was really early in the year. Now, something I think Purdue does a lot more now, especially compared to last year and even the early part of the season, is that they'll have Edie work from the middle. So he doesn't always have to work from a block right now. Um, So you're going to see Purdue kind of runs this. It's kind of like... um, it's, it's supposed to be a double screen sometimes if Gillis or TKR is the one setting it. But if Lawyer's setting it, he's usually going to slip out kind of to this opposite wing. And then as that's happening, you're just going to see Edie dive. And so basically the whole thing that I'm wanting to point out is Edie sets a screen. Now he dives and he's going to seal his man in the middle. And so now as he catches it, he's in the middle of the floor and he can kind of dictate. Sometimes he buries his dude and it just catches and dunks it right away. Sometimes he can put it on the dribble or put it on the floor and then go to into his move. And that's kind of what he does here. Sometimes he can go up quick. But now being in the middle, he's the one that kind of dictates more. And so right here, I think Purdue should probably, will probably go to this more. Now in this game, Gonzaga took more threes than every game except one for them themselves this year. And this is the Purdue-Gonzaga game from the Maui Invitational. And it was a pretty just concerted effort, I think, from Gonzaga of trying to draw Zach Eady out. And now EK, is, he hit two threes this game. Um, and he's only hit one or two, a few the rest of the season combined. But you're going to see here, right here, he, he is a guy that is going to roll to the rim often. He does not pop and shoot. But against Zach Eady and their drop coverage, Gonzaga went to it. And they went to it multiple times. I mean, he put up six threes in this game, by far a season high. Um, and that's just what they're going to try to do. And he, Purdue's also going to live with it. They're going to live with bad shooters taking shots, and you just kind of hope that they miss. Uh, this one, I think he misses. But like I said, he hit two in this game. But that's going to be something that I assume Gonzaga tries to go to again. So another example of kind of a pick and pop action right here from Gonzaga against Purdue. Now this time it's going to be Ben Gregg. And Ben Gregg is a respected shooter. He's shooting like 38% on the season. And so they're going to flow into kind of an empty corner pick and roll. Nobody over here for Gonzaga. Purdue's going to ice it. So force sideline. Edie's going to be in his drop coverage. Now one thing to note is that Gillis was ready here. Um, and because Greg is a shooter, I'm curious if this was a little bit of a breakdown from Edie and he was supposed to stay out higher. But now you're going to actually see him close out, and that's because Greg is a shooter. And one of the things that's changed for Gonzaga from this game to current day is that he's now starting. And so they start three bigs, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit in this video. But something to mention, and especially if Edie is ever on him, he's going to pick and pop probably every single time. He misses this one. He didn't shoot well in this game, but really nobody on either side did. So next, I think I want to talk about how Gonzaga defends the pick and roll. And the pick and roll has become a very, very useful tool for Purdue, and it's become a staple. Um, Kind of early in the year, I think it was more of they were developing into a team that could run it consistently. And at this point, it is absolutely a go-to with Brainsmith being one of the best point guards in the entire country. But now Gonzaga, they're going to do pretty much, for the most part, they're going to do the same thing. And so this big right here, who's ever guarding the screener, usually it's EK, He's going to just kind of be what I call at the level. And so some people call it like a flat hedge, um, but at the level is the terminology I'm going to use. And so he's just going to kind of be next to where the screen is set. And so it isn't normal drop coverage where the drop in drop coverage, right? He's going to worry about really getting back. He's going to kind of put two on the ball. And so just make sure that the point guard has to get rid of it. Now, St. Mary's does a good job here of finding the short roll. And and Edie isn't necessarily going to be a guy that's on the short roll. 
Um, but he's able to get it here and then go to work. The other thing I want to call out, right, is so Gonzaga is going to pretty much, for the most part, do this, right? They're going to put two on the ball, and that's just what they've shown this entire season. With Ben Gregg starting, right, and, and being this third big that they'll play, they're kind of going to be a little bit more comfortable being able to switch this now. So now he's going to be able to step up. EK is going to be able to drop back. And so if this is Edie that catches it here, you're going to be more likely to kind of have a body here for Gonzaga already. Um, and that's just something that they can do now with playing the three bigs more. But in general, yeah, just this, this kind of flat hedge at the level is what Gonzaga is going to try to do against the pick and roll. Now, one way to kind of beat this hedge is by having some skip passes or, or just kind of manipulating taggers and the rotation that Gonzaga's defense is going to be in when in pick and roll. So this is Kentucky against Gonzaga. They're going to be in horns formation, so two kind of the slot area, elbow extended, two in the corner, ball handler at top. And so they're just going to go off one screen, and so this is going to engage, right, in this, this kind of flat hedge at the level that I've been talking about. And so notice there's two on the ball. And so the guy who sets the screen, he's going to pop out. The other big is going to dive to the rim and take EK with him. And now you can already see. I mean, this is just a wide open three. And this is the one area Gonzaga hasn't defended the greatest. Um, they're, they're about D1 average in terms of allowing three-point attempts and also allowing three-point makes. So this is one of the areas where teams can beat them is just on stuff like this, manipulating defenses and, and getting open looks. Well, you may be asking yourself now, does like Purdue run any set like that? And the answer is absolutely yes. It is, especially that's play specifically, it is one of their staples. They'll go to it a ton. So you're going to see this horns look, right? And, and you have the shooter kind of off screen here in the corner, another corner, two bigs kind of at the slot. Now, in the previous play, the ball handle went off of, uh, would have been Gillis here, and, and Gillis pops to the top. But either way, you're going to see with um, Minnesota right here, they're kind of in this, this head. They're a little bit more aggressive than Gonzaga, but similar concept of just kind of keeping the ball handler moving side to side. And then that means that somebody's going to have to take Edie on the roll. Now, maybe for Gonzaga, it could be the weak side man. He comes over and tags and you stay with the shooter. And then you just live with the skip pass and hope you get back in time. But Purdue is so good with Edie just creating space and ceiling that you have to send at least one, if not two bodies to him. And so now you're just kind of scrambling from there. Gillis is one of, you know, has been one of the best shooters in the country all season. And so now this is just a way that they get a lot of looks, especially against this type of flat hedge or at the level or even a hedge if Gonzaga went there. Now, when we talk about post-ups, obviously Purdue is going to be the team that jumps off the page, but Gonzaga is a team that runs almost the most post-ups in the entire country, only behind Purdue, Purdue and a couple other teams. So this play right here is going to kind of combine two things. And we'll talk about the transition stuff a little bit later, um, but Gonzaga can get out and run. And then they're also very willing to throw it in the post. And so you're going to say see EK right here. He's just going to kind of seal his man in the middle of the lane. And so this is in transition as um, the defense is trying to pick up guys. And so now he's going to get it. And he loves going over this right shoulder. So you're going to see him spin this way, right? Get over that right shoulder. Get to that left hand. Um, and, and he can go up quick. And so it can be in transition. It can be at set play, which we'll look at next. But um, Gonzaga is very, very, very willing to throw it in the post and let EK go to work like he did here. It doesn't always have to be in transition, though. They are, Gonzaga is very comfortable with kind of running stuff for him to get looks. And so you're going to see here, I'm going to rewind a little bit, just a high pick and roll for Nemhard to get downhill. And then they're going to look to high-low action. And so they're going to get to Watson up here. And you're going to see, as this is already happening, EK is going to be kind of doing his work, creating some space for him, getting an angle for this post-entry pass. And now he gets it. Notice the spacing, right? So Watson's usually going to dive to this opposite block. When Greg's in, he's going to be filling out to a corner, and then you have your two guards kind of stationed up top. Um, and that's another thing. With this three-big lineup, it doesn't matter because Greg is still a very good shooter. They can kind of work out with the spacing. And then from there, it's just one-on-one -on -one play. You're going to see the dig in, and EK is just skilled in the post. He's able to get, once again, to that right shoulder, get the left hook over it, and that's what he wants to do. Get to it. Easy bucket right there. So this is kind of what Purdue's post defense has become, their scheme. Um, for the most part, they will do this. Sometimes they will stay one-on-one, -on -one, but this has kind of been what they've shown lately. And so you're going to see Pharrell Payne gets it here in the post, and Edie's going to show out to the side. And so what he's trying to do is force the ball handler or whoever's in the post, which would be generally EK, towards the rim, towards the baseline, where there's going to be help from the other big. And so as that happens, that's going to put pressure on whoever this weak side man is. This time it's Brayden Smith. He has to be able to both get down and help tag um, and kind of this, it would be Watson in this case right here for Gonzaga and also kind of get back. But this is the thing it is Purdue is just going to force baseline. Even if it was, say, Gillis's guy, it, it, say if Watson was the one that was posting up, he would also do the same thing. And then Edie would be the one waiting here. 
And so now you're going to see forces into coverage, basically a double team now essentially right there. Tough shot. I'm going to get the miss. And that's just what Purdue's post defense has been for a while now. And so now I want to dive into a little bit more of that three big lineup that Gonzaga has been throwing out. And they've been starting and playing a lot. So it's EK and, and Watson, um, who are both guys that have started like the entire season. But then Ben Gregg here is a six foot ten forward, um, but he's more of a shooter. He's a guy that's going to stay out on the perimeter for the most part. Um, and he has been a very good shooter. But Gonzaga is still going to flow through their normal stuff, right? They're a team that can run a lot of pick and rolls, let Nemhard kind of distribute. And, and that's where they, in pick and roll, like they look to distribute more than actually score. Um, that's what's going to happen here. So empty pick and roll. St. Mary's is going to step up. Nemhard does a good job here of, of just driving and attacking, get the drop off to EK, but just good spacing too with Greg in because he is a respected shooter. Um, it, it makes it a little bit difficult to help off of him. And we're going to go through the next play, which will be kind of, I think, one of the bigger things that they've changed with this lineup. But just in general, it's showing that they can run this three big lineup, but still do pretty much everything the same. And maybe one of the biggest differences for this three big lineup is that Gonzaga is just rebounding the offensive glass so much better with this three big lineup. And obviously that makes sense, right? You're replacing a 6'6 guy for like a 6'10 guy. Naturally, you should be getting some more rebounds, but they all do a good job of attacking the glass too. And so this is going to kind of combine a few things. You're going to get an EK post up right here. You're going to get the spacing around. You're going to get Watson opposite block. He's going to get to that right shoulder. Really good move. Um, and he just, you know, this is one that he just ends up missing. Very good move though. But look at Greg right here. He's going to dive, and he's the new addition to this lineup. He's going to dive hard. You're going to see Watson fighting hard. And so now when it's here, Watson clears out this area, and Greg is coming in. Nobody hits him. So now he's the one that's able to grab it up and go. So the three big lineup for Illinois does kind of pose some issues, right? Purdue's going to start three guards, three smaller guards at that. And so how is that going to match up? And, and I think it's not exactly the same as this Illinois team, but I think you'll see kind of a similar formula to how Purdue will try to match up. And so you'll see Edie right here. He's on a non-shooter. Um, this time it's Rogers, but for Gonzaga, that's going to be EK. That's, that's what's going to happen. You're going to see Jones take one of the two guards, whether it be Nemhard or Hickman. In the previous matchup, I saw a lot of Smith on Nemhard. I wouldn't be shocked to see Jones switch. Smith's going to take whoever of the two is not, whether it be Nemhard or Hickman. And so that's going to leave TKR and, and Lawyer. And that's going to leave two bigs, right? There's Watson and Ben Gregg. I assume TKR is going to take Watson um, and, and kind of just help in the paints, help near the rim, probably live if Watson does shoot. I know he's shooting a good percentage from three, but doesn't take a ton. And then that's going to leave lawyer on Greg. And so I think they're just going to sell out on like, Hey, basically run Greg off the line. I know Greg also converts well at the rim, um, but force into help. And you kind of can live from there. And that's, I think what they're going to try to do. And just basically have ED one man zone, unless EK is obviously in the post. And then from there, just rotate out. And so um, it's obviously going to be something to watch. And then also just the fact of switching. Do they switch everything? Are they switching guard to guard? What do they go through there? There's also the other side of the ball. Of that does mean like Ben Gregg probably has to guard Lance Jones or Fletcher Lawyer. So does Purdue try to take advantage there? Should be a pretty fun mass, uh, matchup and, and chess match in terms of the substitutions and kind of how these teams want to go at each other. So this will be a fun game. When we look back at the first matchup, neither team shot well at all. It was Purdue's worst three-point shooting night of the season. Gonzaga's fourth worst. So there are things to take away, but also these are just two different teams. Purdue has become more um, reliant on the pick and roll, and, and Brain Smith has emerged as a top point guard. Gonzaga's going three bigs, and they've also just improved in multiple areas throughout. So some of the other things that I'll be looking for is transition. Gonzaga's going to want to get out and run. That first matchup had a lot of possessions. Is Purdue going to be able to slow the game down a little bit and keep Gonzaga out of that big tempo? Rebounding is going to be the, another big thing, and I kind of already mentioned it with the three-big lineup for Gonzaga, but these are two pretty good rebounding teams. Purdue dominates the glass generally, so can they keep that up? And then the last thing is foul trouble. These, these are two teams that don't foul a lot, but obviously Edie, he draws more fouls than anybody in the entire country. Last In the first game, he got their bigs into foul trouble, and that's when he started kind of being able to get going and get working on the offensive glass especially. Um, can Gonzaga stay out of foul trouble? Do they double to try to help prevent that? I don't know. It's going to be a really fun matchup in the Sweet 16. 